Section 6 of Aesop's Fables, A New Translation, written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Rosalind Carlyle. The Olive Tree and the Fig Tree an olive tree taunted a fig tree with the loss of her leaves at a certain season of the year you she said lose your leaves every autumn and are bare till the spring whereas i as you see remain green and flourishing all the year round soon afterwards there came a heavy fall of snow which settled on the leaves of the olive so that she bent and broke under the weight but the flakes fell harmlessly through the bare branches of the fig, which survived to bear many another crop. The Lion and the Boar One hot and thirsty day in the height of summer, a lion and a boar came down to a little spring at the same moment to drink. In a trice they were quarrelling as to who should drink first. The quarrel soon became a fight, and they attacked one another with the utmost fury. Presently, stopping for a moment to take breath, they saw some vultures seated on a rock above, evidently waiting for one of them to be killed, when they would fly down and feed upon the carcass. The sight sobered them at once, and they made up their quarrel, saying, We had much better be friends than fight and be eaten by vultures. The walnut tree. A walnut tree, which grew by the roadside, bore every year a plentiful crop of nuts. Every one who passed by pelted its branches with sticks and stones in order to bring down the fruit, and the tree suffered severely. It is hard, it cried, that the very persons who enjoy my fruit should thus reward me with insults and blows. THE MAN AND THE LION A man and a lion were companions on a journey, and in the course of conversation they began to boast about their prowess, and each claimed to be superior to the other in strength and courage. They were still arguing with some heat when they came to a crossroad where there was a statue of a man strangling a lion. There, said the man triumphantly, look at that. Doesn't that prove to you that we are stronger than you? Not so fast, my friend, said the lion. That is only your view of the case. If we lions could make statues, you may be sure that in most of them you would see the man underneath. The moral of the story is there are two sides to every question. THE TORTOISE AND THE EAGLE A tortoise, discontented with his lowly life, and envious of the birds he saw disporting themselves in the air, begged an eagle to teach him to fly. The eagle protested that it was idle for him to try, as nature had not provided him with wings. But the tortoise pressed him with entreaties and promises of treasure, insisting that it could only be a question of learning the craft of the air. So at length the eagle consented to do the best he could for him, and picked him up in his talons. Soaring with him to a great height in the sky, he then let him go, and the wretched tortoise fell headlong and was dashed to pieces on a rock. THE KID ON THE HOUSETOP A kid climbed up on to the roof of an outhouse, attracted by the grass and other things that grew in the thatch and as he stood there browsing away he caught sight of a wolf passing below and jeered at him because he couldn't reach him the wolf only looked up and said i hear you my young friend but it is not you who mock me but the roof on which you are standing the fox without a tail a fox once fell into a trap and after a struggle managed to get free, but with the loss of his brush. He was then so much ashamed of his appearance that he thought life was not worth living unless he could persuade the other foxes to part with their tails also, 
and thus divert attention from his own loss. So he called a meeting of all the foxes, and advised them to cut off their tails. They're ugly things anyhow, he said, and besides, they're heavy, and it's tiresome to be always carrying them about with you. But one of the other foxes said, My friend, if you hadn't lost your own tail, you wouldn't be so keen on getting us to cut off our own. The Vain Jackdaw Jupiter announced that he intended to appoint a king over the birds, and named a day on which they were to appear before his throne, when he would select the most beautiful of them all to be their ruler. Wishing to look their best on the occasion, they repaired to the banks of a stream, where they busied themselves in washing and preening their feathers. The jackdaw was there along with the rest, and realised that with his ugly plumage he would have no chance of being chosen as he was. So he waited till they were all gone, and then picked up the most gaudy of the feathers they had dropped, and fastened them about his own body, with the result that he looked gayer than any of them. When the appointed day came, the birds assembled before Jupiter's throne, and, after passing them in review, he was about to make the jackdaw king, when all the rest set upon the king-elect, stripped him of his borrowed plumes, and exposed him for the jackdaw that he was. The Traveller and His Dog a traveller was about to start on a journey, and said to his dog, who was stretching himself by the door, Come, what are you yawning for? Hurry up and get ready. I mean you to go with me. But the dog merely wagged his tail and said quietly, I'm ready, master. It's you I'm waiting for. The Shipwrecked Man and the Sea a shipwrecked man cast up on a beach, fell asleep after his struggle with the waves. When he woke up, he bitterly reproached the sea for its treachery in enticing men with its smooth and smiling surface, and then, when they were well embarked, turning in fury upon them and sending both ship and sailors to destruction. The sea arose in the form of a woman and replied, Lay not the blame on me, O sailor, but on the winds. By nature I am as calm and safe as the land itself. But the winds fall upon me with their gusts and gales, and lash me into fury that is not natural to me. The Wild Boar and the Fox a wild boar was engaged in whetting his tusks upon the trunk of a tree in the forest when a wolf came by and seeing what he was at said to him why are you doing that pray the huntsmen are not out today and there are no other dangers at hand that i can see mm, true my friend replied the boar but the instant my life is in danger i shall need to use my tusks there will be no time to sharpen them then Mercury and the Sculptor Mercury was very anxious to know in what estimation he was held by mankind, so he disguised himself as a man and walked into a sculptor's studio, where there were a number of statues finished and ready for sale. Seeing a statue of Jupiter among the rest, he inquired the price of it. A crown, said the sculptor. Is that all? said he, laughing, and pointing to one of Juno. How much is this one? That, was the reply, is half a crown. And how much might you be wanting for that one, over there now? He continued, pointing to a statue of himself. That one, said the sculptor. Oh, I'll throw him for nothing if you'll buy the other two. The Fawn and His Mother A hind said to her fawn, who was now well grown and strong, my son, nature has given you a powerful body and a stout pair of horns, and I can't think why you are such a coward as to run away from the hounds. Just then they both heard the sound of a pack in full cry, but at a considerable distance. You stay where you are, said the hind, never mind me, and with that she ran off as fast as her legs could carry her. 
The Fox and the Lion A fox who had never seen a lion one day met one and was so terrified at the sight of him that he was ready to die with fear. After a time he met the lion again and was still rather frightened, but not nearly so much as he had been when he first met him. But when he saw the lion for the third time, he was so far from being afraid that he went up to him and began to talk to him as if he had known him all his life. The Eagle and His Captor A man once caught an eagle, and after clipping his wings, turned him loose amongst the fowls in his henhouse, where the eagle moped in a corner, looking very dejected and forlorn. After a while his captor was glad enough to sell him to a neighbour, who took him home and let his wings grow again. As soon as he had recovered the use of them, the eagle flew out and caught a hare, which he brought home and presented to his benefactor. A wolf observed this and said to the eagle, Don't waste your gifts on him. Go and give them to the man who first caught you. Make him your friend, and then perhaps he won't catch you and clip your wings a second time. End of section 6